activity, which means like uh, you have you ha you have got a key, and then you need to figure out which is the lock. So that is also a possible scenario that uh, you can find out uh, which lock it will fit in. The third kind of thing is like uh, getting the information from traditional medicine and finding the cure. If you have watched, uh, I would say like the Harry Potter movie. So Harry Potter sits on his Nimbus. I believe it was his name of his broomstick was Nimbus 2000 or something. And then he goes and sits and in a room he finds out, he holds on to the key and then say well, finds out which is the active one so these are the three kinds of scenarios what we have like uh, uh, and uh, for this uh, lecture we will be only focusing on the first one where uh, it needs uh, we know where uh, what is the area in which we need to uh, do the uh, find the drug discovery. So this is, we would be focusing on mainly on the first case uh, scenario. Okay, moving on to the next line. So the, since we are based out of Chennai, the best example, what I thought was Sri Rikota is not uh, far off from here. So I picked up uh, a rocket launch and the flight path as an example on how a uh, drug or, or uh, drug travels through our uh, body. So if you uh, think like you have a, a rocket launch pad wherein you can launch it from either the surface or from water or from air. So each case it's slightly different Then people would say that no, 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 it's only the mission mass was launched in from Sri Kota, all other missiles are launched from Balasur in Orissa. Yeah, probably yes. So the requirements are slightly different, but in a rocket launch, we have like uh, the uh, places in Hassan or in Bangalore, where are they? The path, the path can be determined also. And also we can uh, get the course of uh, how the tr uh, rocket tra uh, travel, uh, travels through the space and goes, um, goes into the required orbit. So in this case, what uh, like the Mangalyan or, so the precision is always the key, right? So there is a lot of calculations done in order to ensure that the rocket reaches the required place. So the launch could be different. You can either like if you are targeting it from a, a fighter jet or if it is being a submarine, you are using a torpedo. The targets are fixed. The launches are different. The requirements are different. Like in a, a torpedo, you don't use fire as a base. You use pressure as a base in order to get the torpedo launched, right? So, uh, and the entire, in the entire rocket, like uh, even if you see the Mangalyan, the entire, uh, the rover which is sitting is a small part of the entire uh, rocket. So it is very hardly, if you ca compare the entire rocket, it is hardly like, I would say like 10% of the entire weight. So in a rocketing system, you have the propulsion or guidance system and the payload. So in a formulation part, in a drug part, the formulation, it can be come in, it can be done in different ways. Okay. So we'll come it come to that in the subsequent slide. Uh, what we need to do is like, unlike a rocket, which you can see in the sky, a drug which goes inside the body, it's very difficult for us to use a scanner and then say that where the drug is. So usually it will need like 
like uh, as indicated in the lecture yesterday, it is like a lot of HPLC and LCMS analysis, which we will need to do in order to find out whether the drug has come out active or is it a metabolite which has come out. Anyway, both in a locket launch and a drug, precision is the key. And uh, it's only like the small part of the entire tablet or a capsule, which is uh, doing the effective trick. So the key would be like, uh, I would say the root of administration. What are the excipients you're adding? The excipients are your uh, propulsion system and then they ensure that where you want to get the molecule out. Because when you are travel traveling into the body system, you, once it is down the duct, then the, there is like the hard pH, different pH in the stomach, which your uh, um, drug will be exposed to. So on the roots of um, administration, like, so you go to a hospital, the first thing what they do is like, uh, they give you an, for general treatment, if you're sick, they, go, they put an IV intravenous injection and then, then probably if you're not uh, diabetic, they will put you on glucose. So it is very effective. So immediately it gives you the energy because the glucose directly goes into the blood and all the system starts working uh, in order. The oral is slightly hard because it has to travel through all the path and in the desired place, it has to get dissolved in order to uh, ensure effective absorption, whether you have uh, bicol or sublingual, uh, then we have the intramuscular or rectal trans transdermal patches, uh, recent trends which are stuck onto the hand. Then uh, we have uh, the subcutaneous, uh, sometimes uh, the corona, corona injection, which is given in subcutaneous uh, la uh, layer. Then we have the inhalation. Then a tropical cream or uh, which we apply. So if you say like, uh, I would say like uh, oral, there are different forms, like whether it is going to be a pills or a tablet, capsule, syrup, suspension. So we understand that uh, that there is a lot of complexity in the way a drug needs to be administered. So it's slightly challenging. Why is it challenging? Because the bioavailability for a same molecule in different scenario is different. So if you're going to give an IV, it's 100%, it's directly into the blood and then it's active. When it is oral, yeah, the paracetamol 500 or 625 mg paracetamol which you take, the entire thing doesn't deliver the required activity, it is only certain percentages. So whether you are going on an uh, intramuscular injection or uh, subcutaneous, it's slightly painful. And of course, some of the cases wherein you have a puff kind of a thing for inhalation, it's very fast. Now, for, in this few slides, what we have done is that we have seen the path, we have seen the propulsion system, what is there and how it is being, how you can launch your drug. Okay, so this is your propulsion system. Now let's get to what we call, let's get to the meat or uh, let's get to understanding of some of the mechanics of how your molecule should not look like. You will come how it should come. It should look like later. So first thing I would say is the most eye-catching one was in World War uh, One when uh, they used the mustard mustard gas, right? So mustard gas was used and the mustard gas would uh, directly cling onto your uh, DNA. So if you see the uh, example, 
you see that the Cl minus is being displaced and then it forms a three member cut ring with the sulfur and the DNA opens up. And uh, the uh, mustard gas generated and then uh, there are the blisters which you are seen as in the World War One. Okay, afterwards, it was later classified as a chemical weapon and that it's not, not, not used. But is it good or bad? But that's a learning, right? This is a learning. Now, how do I use this learning into a more real life scenario? Now, I know that a three member uh, 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 sulfur forms a three member ring. So what uh, the drug uh, melphalan does is it is a very similar to what you saw in the earlier slide, but the role, what it does is slightly different. So here, you know, what is the actual, what is the API capable of? So you launch it in a way uh, uh, such that it acts on the cancer cells and then stops multiplication multi uh, multiplications of the cell so it is like uh, i would say like uh, uh, people are aware of uh, shivakashi right so coming from tamil nadu if you tell anybody like firecrackers are made in shivakashi it is like you send you are you you, you are planning to send a fire uh, firecracker on the sky and then if it explodes halfway down it will cause serious trouble but in this case it is very well controlled and then launched into a successful orbit of blocking the uh, uh, dna multiplication okay this is a classical example like uh, which most of you would have come across right the thalidomide uh, incidents so this was world war one this is world war two world war two uh uh the r thalidomide was the one which was active it was a good sedative it was administered very fine but, and then it found like good results but once it entered the body if you see that the uh, CH, which is active, it racemized, and then the S isomer, S isomer was a uh, uh, tetragen, and then uh, it stopped the uh, limbs multiplication in uh, small kids. When it was uh, it was administered to pregnant, it was administered to pregnant women, and then uh, the kids were born with uh, like hands and legs uh, disorders. So this was one of the shocking incidents which uh, uh, took the pharma industry by storm in those days. So they came up with a resolution that for whenever you make a isomer, when you test the R, it's all equivalent uh, that uh, you also need to test the S isomer. Now, if you ask me that, is this the only example? No, there is like uh, another example, I would say like uh, 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 this Prazikuntal. Prazikuntal is another example, wherein the R isomer is, uh, Prazikuntal is uh, anti helminthic uh, drug. So the R is slightly more uh, sweeter than the S, S is slightly bitter and the R is more active than the S. You have uh, Dr. Shivapa also on the call. He also also made a chiral compound, camptothesin. So that is also a chiral compound and in one of the isomers is active. So, and then, uh, so these are uh, some of the rules uh, which are basic guiding documents, but let's see the rules of the, some rules of the game. The rules, I would put it as like guidance rules, okay? So these are all the guiding documents. So there are no like 
like uh, thumb rules. If you say like uh, we uh, like uh, in colleges we used to play cricket, and it is like there was uh, twenty years back nobody used used to do a switch hit, and then then uh, now we, if you see the young people, they all use the switch hit as a good technique and to perfection. So there is no fixed rule as such, but these are the top rules like. Still, we would say consider the in cricket the cover cover drive is the best of the examples. So, I've put one of the best example as the Omi Prasal for this and the bottom of the side. So the rule says like this is called as um, Lipinski's rule of five. Okay, there are four, four rules, but it's all in fives. So no more than five hydrogen donor bonds like the nitrogen and uh, Hydrogen bonds should not be more than five. See here, the uh, uh, benz uh, imidazole has one. The oxygen to hydrogen, whether it's uh, OH, and not more than uh, ten hydrogen acceptors, all inclusive of uh, nitrogen or oxygen atom. Molecular weight should be preferably lower than five hundred and. The partition between the octane water rule should be should not exceed five. So since these are all multiples of five, it is called the Lipinski's uh, rule of five. But these are not uh, the rule of thumb. Like if you Google uh, structure of uh, ranitidin, ranitidin I would say is a Best example which would uh, violate uh, this rule, and uh, uh, most of us during a course of antibiotic would have immediately taken uh, ranitidine. So, if you populate all the drugs, uh, all the uh, active pharmaceutical ingredients into a graph, you would see that uh, most of it falls. Uh, in the category of wherever the plus is there. And uh, there are like exceptions, I would say, like uh, exceptions uh, of one rule or two rules or multiple rules. But most of the cases wherein we do a drug discovery is like the, based on the uh, Lipin, uh, Lipinski's rule. Generally, as rule of thumb, what we would try avoiding is like alkyl halides. So, because alkyl halides, I would have seen in the earlier uh, slides that they will go and do alkylation at unwanted points and then it would cause trouble. Then we try avoiding aldehydes, ketones, thiols. Yes, thiols are uh, known to dimerize. And there are like other sets of um, uh, functional groups also we try avoiding. So because uh, these bonds can form uh, the covalent bond. Okay. So these are the guidance document. Now we have learned about, we have learned about, uh, I would say like uh, the launch pad or, and then the guidance documents and uh, what are uh, the targets which we can do and what is the success rate the success rate for getting a molecule into the market so we start off with probably around uh, 10000 molecules in the start the chance that you would reach to one final molecule in a matter of probably like around 12 to 13 years is one, okay? It's a long spanning program. Like um, uh, there are like a lot of uh, interdependencies, okay? I'm a, I would say like, yeah, uh, a organic chemist by training, but uh, the person who presented yesterday um, is also equivalently very, very important, like the analytical person. So if you call, consider me like, what does an organic chemist do best is like cooking recipes in the lab with uh, chemicals, but the analytical person is the taster. He analyzes and gives 
what is the right compound and what is the right composition of those so it is like a synergic uh, thing and uh, if you want to add like uh, people like others like a computational uh, computational chemist who will tell a, or a dietitian right say so you would tell that oh these are all the carbohydrate is so much this thing so those are all done, done by the computational chemists computational chemists will guide you on what are the uh, possible structures uh, what you can put in this will bind this will not bind those kinds of uh, things a uh, computational chemist will also help you uh -huh. i put in a, a old uh, terminology it's it's not a furlong right furlong is a very old uh, english terminology which indicates roughly around uh, 200 200 meter uh, distance uh but the whole process of a drug discovery is far too long than a furlong okay uh, so when uh, we target uh, there is like different phases right different phases of uh, the discovery before we reached even to clinical trials. So different phases are there. So uh, when uh, like uh, Shivapa showed that uh, selecting a selecting a target, we have and then the design. How what is the target which is going to be? So if it is going to be a target in a lung, so we have to look out for molecules which are very effective. So you have to use a spray. So one of the molecule which probably I worked, yeah, had a 25 sequence of amino acid and a three peptide mimic, and it was supposed to be administered as a uh, administered as a spray. It's sometimes uh, very challenging, uh, and one of like it's not always that the computer computation chemists are always good at organic. So once what happened is uh, we got a uh, design from a computation, computational chemist. So every third atom was a hetero atom. It was either nitrogen, sulfur, or oxygen. And there, there was like 15 atoms. And it was all in a linear chain or branched chain. So then we went and told that, look, making a 15 chain, 15 uh, 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 heteroatom sequence is going to be very difficult. We probably need to modify, get rid of at least one or two of them, and then assemble it, assemble it back again. So those kinds of discussions do happen, and uh, between uh, uh, computational chemists and uh, uh, organic chemists. Uh, the then we come to like the lead discovery so we screen uh, libraries of molecules for where you are going to have your uh, active active core and uh, the most important part is as soon as you start the synthesis part the uh, the dmpk the drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics people would start the assay development the challenging part is that the synthesis takes a longer time and then the assay the moment you give them an assay like within three or four days they will tell you that yes your molecule is pass or fail so it's probably more uh, faster than uh, you have to correct a 40 or 50 question papers uh, the assay people will tell you whether it is passing or fail so it would have taken me like uh, uh, time to make a molecule for around three months or four months and then I walked down the corridor and then, then uh, the DMPK says that, oh, you know, your uh, molecule is uh, that CP inhibition is very high. Or uh, you would say like, it's uh, IC50 is not good. And uh, if I am lucky that I cross in and then uh, I reach to the preclinical stage, sometimes the uh, DMPK guy would say like, hey, Shivashankar, look, yesterday night, the uh, rats did not sleep well okay they started they were scratching their paw too much so your drug is not 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 so good so those kind of comments which we, we we used to get and then it's always like back and forth going and then getting the right molecule through so uh 
and then uh, as a part of uh, medicinal chemistry like uh, you design and then you find out the space how much you need to cover around the molecule once you have a molecule and then how much you want to cover so it is not uh, always uh, very easy to find out uh, uh, like synthetically everything is not feasible but that is why we learn like a lot of extensive organic chemistry we write learn named reactions a lot in order to uh, understand uh, what is the best things which we can put through so let me get to one more interesting topic that's we call i told like uh, how much to cover right uh, so there is uh, one thing called as a bioisoster which is a typical terminology which is used in a drug discovery when we have uh, the core uh if you have a oh it is substituted by nh2 or a thiol thiol is not so good then you have a active methylene we try substituting it with an oxygen or an amine or a sulfur so that we try covering the space around those active molecules so when we talk about uh, covering up space if you see the examples three examples which are provided the structures would uh, uh, look uh, very uh, very similar right so it's like uh, in a typical book if you are uh, a tamil book reader if you go and read uh, kumudam there is a center page which says uh, five differences and if you see that uh, five differences it is not much different that uh, from the first and last i would say like it is a bromo to cf3 only change there is there is a difference in the solubility micromolar change now if i convert the bromo to chloro and substitute the carboxylic with an oh the molecule itself has got a lower solubility and it's only like uh, minimum inhibitory constant is only like uh, 20 micromolar so when we talked about uh, bioisoester so this is a typical example like uh, if there are people uh, like me uh, who take uh, metoprolol in the morning to keep up the blood pressure uh, there are like lots of uh, molecules so i have only selected like all it is most of them are the beta blockers so which i have taken uh, if you see the example say on uh, i said my favorite is metoprolol daily morning i take one tablet and if you see from one to bisprolol it's pretty much pretty much similar right the one part of it has got the isopropyl amine uh, attached to a phenyl ring and then we have the chain around that this chain in metoprolol is slightly short in bisprolol it's slightly slightly longer so when you are finding out doing a drug discovery program if you would have missed on bisprolol and somebody else finds out that the bisprolol is more active than metoprolol your market molecule is down it will not it might hit the market but in the eventually in the race you will lose to bisprolol so bisprolol is more powerful or if you have felt like esmoprolol or the other analog we have lost the race so it is sustenance is also very important so when you find out a molecule you have to ensure that you cover the width uh, around the circumference and then you cover all the molecules in and around the vicinity so that there is a sustenance for your molecule in the long run it might so happen that you might be look you might have one target and then you might be searching you might find some other molecule which is more interesting and then we'll start working around that sometimes what happens is you get lost in the race for one to two two to three loss and somebody else comes and then they come up with the drug and they they file and then they enter the market so it is Uh, always a race on how much you want to cover and how fast you want to launch so this is always a, a thing which we should always be conscious of the other one is a very classy example like uh, uh, the beta lactam 
beta lactam uh, set of antibiotics. So if you see here, most of them, right? Most of them are like, uh, if you're going to consider uh, PNM, which is uh, labeled as uh, A, and then uh, if you're uh, going to consider uh, carbapenem, which is only a sulfur atom uh, difference or oxapenem. So there is a very subtle difference between that, but the properties would drastically change. So um, now it is also, you need to look that the molecule is a beta lactam. Beta lactam is anytime you ask people like who have worked on beta lactam, it's a very ring strained system. So not, not too many people, players around. So they have like people who are selected who work in this field. So there is like monopoly in this field. Okay. So it is like how many you want to make and then how you want to launch. So if you consider the A and D difference, A and D difference is only a double bond difference. Okay. So these kinds of subtle difference you are supposed to understand while doing the drug discovery. Now let me give you an uh, example. Okay, uh, we have been uh, talking about uh, a lot of things. Uh, let's give you a live live example on how how it sees in an industry. Okay, this is one of one of the drug. This is uh, this is called a Zarnasa and then Farnesyl transferase inhibitor for Parkinson's. It was made. This drug went through all the stages, uh, but it did not make to clinic because there was uh, impurity which was seen, the N oxide, which was seen and then uh, it's not so good and it has to be rejected. So when uh, another company picked up, they saw that, okay, what I do is instead of, if you see here, the difference is you have a OH over here, the OH is converted to the amine. Here you have a nitrogen, and then instead of an acetylene, they have fixed it up with a chlorine. Pretty much okay kind of a thing. So uh, there was a classy example in uh, our uh, PhD lab, like uh, one of my senior who was working on a project, Irino Takan, he, he, he took like more than five years to complete the synthesis of Irnotech and his, and then one day he comes to lab and then writes the entire scheme. He says that it takes like less than five minutes to write a 14 step synthesis, but it takes like five years to build the entire molecule. So it is sometimes very challenging. And then you have to ba go back and forth and optimize the reaction condition. So in the, uh, the authors of, uh, this um, patent. So they've started off, you see that uh, it's a 11 step synthesis, uh, looking whether it is uh, first step is the synthesis of wine rib. You would use like different reagents, right? So you are, you see, you, you would relate the reaction uh, reactions, which you are learning in your organic chemistry as masters to what you see over here, whether it is wine rib or you do a lithium halogen exchange and then add it across to the wine rib amide to get a ketone, best way to get a ketone and then uh, you displace to get the amine and then do a bromination. So each step when you do, you should also think that it is done multiple times because you need to make it on a small scale and then do an optimization and in order to get uh, to a large scale. So multiple times you have to run back and forth and it's just not that the first time you do a reaction, it works. These are all like, these are, this is not a, these are not, this is not a chemistry which is reported. So there will be like, uh, if it's a solvent alteration, which we need to do, or if you want to say an oxidizing agent, which is used in uh, PCC, somebody would have tried like, oh no, I want to use a, he has used a PCC. I don't like PCC. I want to use Desmartin. Desmartin did not work fine. It gave some of the byproducts. So uh, PCC was the best result. And then they used, 
he had to go with uh, LDA and then he had to cyclize the uh, naphthidone ring and then uh, cleave off the ketal protection in step nine, get to the core. And you see here that the last two steps are killer steps. It's only a 29% yield and then followed by a 21. So the last two steps are killer steps for the entire synthesis. So when we plan a synthesis, you should also look at the yield of your uh, reaction. And later this compound 1B is a racemic compound. Uh, authors have uh, done a chiral resolution and then made it as a chiral compound. The molecule did fine, like, okay, the, the mouse did not scratch its feet. The mouse was fine, everything, all doing great, but the molecule was dropped. The reason, long synthesis, too many steps, chemistry involved. Equivalent to the one slightly better off an edge in the mo molecule, which is there in current market, but we are probably too late. Yeah, so it's always a race of getting there first and then uh, enjoying the market is also like a part of the drug discovery game. Yes, that's all I, what I had. And then probably, yeah, so I would be happy to answer some questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, thanks a lot. So it was like going through, you know, pharma industry. And like we walked through the you know, pharma company. So nice. Yeah. So we have some questions uh, posted. Before that, I'll ask the participants. Participant, if you'd like to unmute and ask yourself, if you have any questions. Yeah, I've not gone through the chat. If you can. I, I can, I can, I'll read yeah. that out. No issues. Yeah. That will do that. Okay. So, okay. So maybe students are not. So let me read out that question one by one. Let you can go for the first question. Okay. What is the most vital phase of Drug development. Mohammed Minas of MSC, he is asking, what is the most vital phase of drug development? Drug vital phase is not to lose hope. You, you, you. I would say, like, let me give, let me give you an example, Mohammed. Like, uh, I, I am also uh, like some of the thing is like, I'm also a stargazer, and incidentally, like uh, from today to ninth. We have a meteor shower in which the height is in Chennai. Okay. And after a long time, we are getting a meteor shower in uh, Chennai. And we won't be able to see it's raining, no? <laughs> yeah. So we have, and today is Amavasya, new moon day, no cloud pollution, nothing. Everything is clear, but we will not be able to see. So the most important thing is not to lose hope. You might fail once, you might fail twice, but never lose hope. I would say that's the very key factor. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's another question by Venkat Subramaniam. I think he's our uh, PhD scholar. Still researchers work on PENAMS. How far good as it needs combination therapy? Yeah, PENAMS are, uh, see, I would say like um, it's... <laughs> Uh, I would say, uh, like I, I had mentioned, like um, the area in which we need to cover, right? So uh, now, if you say like a molecule like a meropenum or a atropinum, which is uh, uh, already in market, and then uh, people still find out the other allied drugs. Uh, which are there with the beta lactams. It could be like it is more potent than uh, what we have already already in the market. So it's, I would say like still very useful in uh, combination therapy. Yes, uh, one of the uh, widely used uh, drug is uh, Piptas, Piprazilin, Tazobactam, both being uh, beta rectums as ampicillin or anything. Yeah. Uh, thank you. 
There's one more question from Lokesh Kumar of MSC Chemistry. Good morning, sir. What is reverse pharmacology and forward pharmacology? Which is better in drug discovery? Uh, I'm not sure about this topic. I, I need to go back and then check. I can get back to you. And I've not heard of this reverse pharmacology. Yeah. I don't know what does he mean by retroanalysis and all that. So no yeah, idea. I, I have no idea about that. Okay. There it's is, a, uh, Janish... it's a probably... probably one thing which um, uh i would uh, say is like um, uh the way uh, people do a reverse phase is like whatever is the active ingredient is there like in an ayurvedic thing and then break down and then find out the active ingredient and then reformulate it back to a more effective way that is only the way i see a back and forth thing coming up Okay. Uh, Dhaneshwari, would you like to unmute yourself and ask? Students are posting questions, but they are not asking. Dhaneshwari, ma'am, yes, ma'am. You want to ask this question? You can ask directly to sir. Hmm. Yes, yes, ma'am. Good morning, sir. I have a question. You said earlier that the drug has to go through so many processes for the approval to come to the market, but why it still have some of the side effects on humans? For uh, for if they take a drug for the long time, so uh, there are uh, like um, the side effects. Okay, uh, when we are do uh, analysis, right? So uh, we do testing in uh, rats or mice, right? The systems slightly are different. I won't say like it is a uh, like to like. but the side effects are the ones which should have been detected in uh, phase 1 or phase 2 clinical trials okay uh, but even if you say like uh, the side effects let me take another uh, example uh, we have uh, nimosulide okay nimosulide is a drug which is very popular in uh, the india if you walk to a pharma uh a pharmacist if you ask him nice on in, in india he gives you an otc drug it's one of the uh, drugs which is used to reduce the temperature but if you go, and in india population we take it we have no effects but if you same thing which you done in abroad you take it there are like side effects to that so it, the side effects are like it's not only like based on rays or uh, uh uh i would say like based on the rays and then uh, the region in which uh, the people are the diet which which people take there are so many things which uh, are related to side effects like some of uh, like my mother is uh, like uh, allergic to sulfur i am not but it depends from person to person also so the allergic uh, is also like dependent on people yes sir thank you sir thanks uh there is a student balashree msc whether we can modify the drug which is affected by some micro particles that to when it is fully completed the process balashree what do you mean ma are you there ma balashree yes ma'am Uh, asma what do you want to ask sir you want you want to ask sir if we modify the drug what do you mean yes. the microbes ask it sir okay uh, that that microbes which present in the air ma'am some oh. micro particles no ma'am okay okay got it so generally when we do uh, when we do a uh, processing for uh, the drug uh, so you like um, the uh i i am i'm i forget the name of the place wherein uh, our chief minister recently visited for uh, uh, starting the vaccine unit for making it in uh, tamil nadu so these uh, when we formulate any drug these are all like uh, done in a highly clean room wherein the microbe levels are pretty pretty low and if it depends upon the intensity so if it is going to be something like a sterile injectable it's the highest because 
uh, we should not have anything. And then even if it is like going to be a solid oral dose or a tableting or a, a, form, a, a bottling of uh, suspension, everything will be done in clean room where uh, the microbial growth will be like very much controlled. So that is when we tell like uh, the microbes should not be there during the uh, during the uh, formulation. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, sir. Um, Aishwarya, you want to ask me? Aishwarya Murli. Other participants, please uh, mute mute yourself. Okay, ask me. Yes, good morning, sir, and good morning, everyone. Uh, can we analyze the, like uh, all the side effects in which you are testing, the, like prepares in humans? Sir? Come again. So, can we analyze all the side effects in vitro animal testing, uh, like the phase in humans? Uh, we would be able to slightly predict, I would say, like uh, uh, to a major amount of uh, extent when we do the toxicology studies. And then, uh, uh, like, uh, we analyze where the deposition of the drug happens. So I would say like 90% or 95% of the toxicology will be assessed because both um, uh, the mammalian systems uh, would be uh, very, very similar. Uh, but I would say like remaining 5%, we, we would know like uh, doing in a phase one clinical trials when we do it on a healthy individuals, we should be able to detect. So uh, most of the cases we will be know, but of course there will be an exception like one in a million case or uh, two in a million case wherein uh, you would say that there will be some allergic reaction. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you if, even if you consider uh, COVID, like the amount of people who have been vaccinated, the newspaper always mentions that uh, the people who have got allergic reactions, but then it doesn't mention the amount of people who have been vaccinated. And so there'll be always okay. exceptions. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Venkat Subramanian, you want to speak to Sir? Hello, Venkat Subramanian. Uh, he has written, thank you, Sir. Proud that you have worked in Phasobactam during Orchid Pharma days. Nice presentation, he has said. And uh, then uh, Swati Shri. Swati Shri, you want to speak out, Ma? How long does it take? Ah, yes, ma. Kel, question kel, ma. Sir. Ma'am, I just asked uh, how long does it take to discover a drug, ma'am? Drug. Other sir. Yeah, it should. Uh, ideally, it will take like uh, uh, in an ideal scenario, it would take around closer on ten plus years. On a fast paced track, we could do like six, seven. It depends. It depends on like uh, uh, if it's a long, ha low, uh, low hanging fruit or something. S sometimes it is challenging. Right? Okay, okay thank sir. You. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Anil Kumar. Anil Kumar, you actually had, he has posted some comments. He has posted a comment. Um, but uh, I had worked on citrofloxane, which was fourteen state synthesis initially, which was reduced to four state. The tremendous improvement in process and reduction in cost. I don't know what who is this. Anil Kumar, are you there? It's Anil Kumar. Okay. That's yes. also a uh, uh, That's also a technique like. Um, uh, you have a mo molecule in the market. So the route in which we make it first, it is always to first to reach the market. Once you reach the market, then it is a question of sustenance. So we go back mm -hmm. and then do a process development uh, so that we are still in the market and we become more cost competitive. So that is 
that is uh, the trick so the first first time it is to get it first time right and then next is the cost and the process part okay. thank you anil kumar you want to speak up i can see anil kumar inside mr anil kumar okay so there is one more question from aishwarya how could covid vaccine come into market without any phase test i think it 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 went through a phase clinical phase 1 2 3 yeah. all, all, all the all the vaccines have gone through the clinical trials if you maybe uh, i should you must be wondering why it came soon it was just on emergency all the tests were done faster that's it anybody else the Any other participants i should just mute the other participants who is speaking other participants please mute yourself yes ma'am anybody has any other participants who would like to ask any questions yes ma aisha aisha ask ma'am tell me yes ma'am ma i am not a participant but still i just wanted to ask can i yes ma you are a participant okay, <laughs> okay. um sir um, i just wanted to ask regarding the antibacterial resistance or oh, sorry antibiotic resistance it is the uh, you know uh, major problem now right because the drugs uh, whichever we are giving that uh, bacteria and all are they are uh, resistant to that and it is causing more problem so what can we do for that sir because once drug is uh, given the uh, bacteria and microbes all are resistant to that so what can uh, i mean is it okay to continue such drugs or uh, we should go for other developing drugs so there are two so are you there yeah yeah very much so you will hear me yeah yes, so sir, can hear. yeah so there are two parts to your answer right uh one is what we call like take drug only if required if you don't need it don't take it because you're uh, like especially when you are being treated on antibiotic so uh, there are like uh, people who just walk into uh, a medical shop and then they buy an antibiotics uh, like over the counter and then start consuming so then what happens is your body obviously like uh, starts on that platform and then any time you want to do uh, take other antibiotic you have to take it at the next level so always take medication when required and regarding the drug resistance bacteria we would of obviously there be like there is like lot of work which is going on in order to build other molecules which will compete uh, which will uh, uh compete with the drug so called drug resistance uh, bacteria there is like lot of work which is going on thank you sir sir i i can ask thank you, you a general question yeah yeah our msc students are looking for a job in pharma companies so what is the requirement you expect from the from the students okay so couple of points like uh, i've made uh, some of the things are answers and uh, presentation itself like we would look for some basic chemistry understanding like uh, the reaction mechanisms where we draw like say we have a molecule like a mustard gas wherein we have a uh, chlorine which is going on uh, an enantiomeric like the case of a thalidomide where it's an r or an s draw and then find out some basic chemistry like understanding of functional groups in organic chemistry which and uh, that's my organic chemistry hat which i wear but uh, it's not always the organic hat it's also the inorganic uh, inorganic also has like um, we i used to we and uh, like uh, used to come from uh, ncl and uh, during the time of 95 probably like ncl was at peak of doing catalysis 
right? Wherein they used to make uh, uh, mixed oxide complexes, inorganic complexes, which used to, which are used for organic transformation, simple transformation, but uh, like uh, the pressure reactions, which you could do at uh, uh, room temperature and at uh, reflex temperatures transformations. So they work on uh, catalysis. That's the inorganic part of it. Uh, there is like a lot of catalysis development and uh, there is uh, now uh, like how we do like uh, technology wise, we are like getting more of technology oriented, like uh, a conventional round bottom flask or which you would see. Now you would see that uh, people are uh, doing a flow chemistry kind of a thing, wherein the reaction happens in a, a cylindrical path and then in tubes, uh, wherein uh, people do a lot of calculations on what is a flow rate, what is the diameter of uh, the tube and uh, the reaction constant, rate of reactions, all those kinds of things. So it is, I would say like, it is becoming more diverse in nature, but one thing is always is like, I'm a huge fan of Rahul Dravid. So, it's always like the basics is very critical. So whatever it is, the basics, never forget the basics. And it chemistry is, is a is, chemistry is a volatile subject. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. If two if the student is coming for uh, a person for QC, QC and person for R and D, like uh, what should the R and D candidate should be specialized in, and a QC candidate to be specialized? master students you can take it yeah. so like uh, as i mentioned like we just we don't expect uh, our expectations are like very minimal it should be a very strong basic foundation of uh, chemistry and then you can build up say if i ask uh, uh, say uh, uh, say you have a mixture of say uh, phenol or uh, phenol and uh, 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 phenol and toluene. How how will you separate? Tell me like three or four techniques. So you should be able to tell like, okay, so, uh, I have done like uh, I know about what is a fractional distillation because they have got two fractional distillation points, uh, two different uh, boiling points, and then they can we can distill it. There is other techniques in which phenol is slightly acidic or. Those kinds of things are. So it's only um, the basics. They should be very strong. It's right basics. Okay simply the basics and then uh, if you like people come and try to tend to tell that no i i know like uh, hplc is something which we can separate and we know like at in college levels it is very hard that people would have seen an hplc yeah. or uh, they would understand so when they say that by hplc we would just go ahead and then ask a few more questions on hplc and then people would be like blank so stick on to your basics I would say like, and then answer the questions, what you know, be confident. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, there is one more last uh, question from Anil Kumar. How do you compare the effectiveness of synthetic drugs with natural drug or natural products? <laughs> tricky question. It's a tricky question for a tricky person, okay. Uh, okay. The pro pro problem is I hail from Calicut, and uh, if you know that Cortical is just 30 kilometers yeah, away from, from yeah. my place, yeah. <laughs> I come from a place where natural product therapy I'm is thinking. very, yeah, very abundant. And as a profession, I am a synthetic, synthetic chemist. So I would say like, it is like a, a two way thing, right? I don't say like, which is good and which is bad, right? Uh, each has got its own like uh, advantage and uh, disadvantage. Uh, uh, as in, like if you are suffering from a core illness, like uh, uh, a cancer which needs to be treated, I would say like, yes, you have like uh, uh, Ayurvedic formulation, but it takes its own course of time to this thing uh, for doing an action. But I, my, in my perspective, like uh, uh, allopathic drug or a synthetic drug would be much 
uh, better. If you have like something like a headache, uh, I don't know, like uh, people in Tamil Nadu generally say that you drink a coffee with a lot of sugar and your headache is down. down. <laughs> <laughs> some some people would uh, manage to take. We uh, still do uh, that. We <laughs> sometimes go for coffee if we have headache. Yes. <laughs> As, so, some people like me would pop in a uh, disparate water and drink and then just walk off and then just say that okay the headache is gone okay. uh, so okay. a very tricky question but i think yeah like what yeah. i usually say is in case of emergency when you, you know there is an accident i think there's no substitute for it right yeah 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 that's if somebody that's is in accident definitely... you have to save a life then i don't think naturopathy is going to help anyway there no no Correct? no yeah So in that so, case, pharma like, comes into picture there. Hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay then. So any other participants? You have any more questions? We are also ahead of time. So it's eleven ten now. So students. Okay, sir. Uh, I think we can wind up. We have asked too many questions here. We are. No, no, no problem. A- anytime. Uh, anytime. I will be happy. I will be happy to answer questions. Yeah. Yes. Aisha? Yeah. Ma'am, shall I, uh, ma'am, shall I play the valediction slide? No, well, we don't have any valediction slide. No need, not. I ma'am. have put this sir's appreciation. You can put, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. And that you can do it, sir. We we cannot give much, but we we'll just have a token of uh, appreciation, one uh, small certificate. So, Ishwa, sir, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank yes. you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hello. Oh, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can uh, hear you. It's really, I open uh, today that uh, most of the participants they started asking me questions, uh, interacting with you. That uh, they are very much interesting and informative and elaborate lecture on the drug design. Okay, sir. Thank yeah. you. We will continue our collaboration, sir. Okay. Thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. A very oh, well a lot. tuned. This is as a token of appreciation. We are giving an appreciation certificate to you. We are really honored by it. your presence. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sure. 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 Sir. Sure. Thank you, lot, Thanks, sir. Lot. Thank you, sir. And it was really, you know, I think many students ask questions today, actually. So oh, I think uh, they could uh, understand the basics, and they are also undergoing a course on medicinal chemistry now, where uh, oh. the, about the lead compound and target. I think uh, one of our faculty, Rafiq sir, is taking the course. So I think they are oh. more regarding to this because of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's re- it's really it's a really interesting uh, topic. Yeah. Uh, so, so, like, w- w- one of the candidate, uh, like uh, the student, asked, like, uh, w- what is the best role? It's not to lose hope. Like, there are like in yes. when we do a medicinal chemistry after every two years or two and a half years, you don't get any lead. You have to drop the program, and it becomes <laughs> restart <Yes>. again. <laughs> I know. I have uh, faced it with the pharma. So that's really nice. Yes. Even in academia, we have still the same. You know, students yeah. do research. and then suddenly you see your work is published you know yeah yeah so and that's the most tragic thing actually so yeah it's, very nice it's... so thanks a lot thank you sir thanks thanks uh, thanks mo thank, thank you sir you, we sir. will continue our interaction and collaboration okay sir thank uh, you okay thanks thanks very kind thanks. of you sir thanks a lot thank thanks. you thanks thanks very kind of you for your time i'll just send uh, you an email yes. thank oh, you oh sure thanks thank participants please uh, you give your feedback and uh, we'll mail your e certificate okay so uh, i thank now um, uh, our uh, management for uh, permitting us to conduct this webinar also thank our dean madam dr s kutirani ma'am and our hod dr ishwar murthy sir all our faculties uh, then aisha begum mrs scholar who helped me in these webinar processes making all the slides and all that so thank you aisha and i also thank last but not least all the participants for attending all the three days you will receive your e certificate soon so give us another two to three days time we'll check out all your emails and we'll mail you okay so thank you one and all for uh, attending thank you thank you students thank you sir thanks thank you sir ishwa sir thank you ha ah, welcome ma thank you i hope that you have to continue this step of program ma bhagavati yes sir <laughs> because there are lots of participants actually yes sir we will get the participant now they started asking questions also na more yes, interaction sir. Okay. yes sir keep it up yes yeah thank you sir thank you
participant please don't forget to give your feedback okay please give your feedback in the link provide the meeting end panidava aisha